Hello viewers, welcome back to the channel. Now today is our last day in Ireland, what a shame. Me, mum and dad have absolutely had a ball here and definitely want to come back. It was absolutely mesmerising. I know it's called the Emerald Isle, but there was much more greenery than I was expecting. So if you haven't already, please check out the previous videos if you want to see some of our trip. But for today, we are away to leave Dublin and catch the ferry over to Wales. So let's get going! Well, it's not a bad day to be catching a ferry. Look at those skies. It's great as. I must say we were really lucky with the weather on our whole trip in Ireland, especially deciding to travel out of season in October. We barely had a bad day of weather and got sunshine most of the time, so it was really lucky. I did make a video previous about catching the ferry from Cairn Ryan in Scotland to Belfast, so if you want to check that out feel free, but this time we are catching it from Dublin city centre over to Holyhead in Wales and we will compare the two, see if there's much difference. It is Stenaline ferries for both so I'd imagine they'd be pretty similar. We decided to check out the ferry terminal and we we're going to grab a bite to eat but beware that the ferry terminal here is much smaller than the one in Cairn Ryan and there isn't really a cafe. There is however vending machines in that so you can get snacks but we decided to go back to the van and make our own sannies instead. There is also custom patrol checks, they did open the back of our van but I think when they seen the mess in there they just closed it and said okay you're free to go. <laughs> so don't be smuggling anything across, you will get caught. After that process, it is time to drive onto the ferry and get your parking spot. Purple stairs, deck 5. Important to note this down as it will make finding your car a lot easier on the way out.
So once you enter the ferry, it's basically just find a spot to park your airs. There's loads of options across many floors, so just find the best spot you can. We sat here because it was close to the cinema and the cafe. But today the ship was really quiet. It was busier on the one from Cairn Ryan, but it's probably just the time of day that we caught it. In Cinema 1 we have Death on the Nile playing today. I did end up watching this, but in all honesty I thought it was pretty garbage, do not recommend, but that's just my opinion. On the plus side the seats in here are super comfy and good for a sleep, which I most definitely did having to endure that movie. And in Cinema 2 they were playing Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Great movie if you haven't seen it, I wish I just re-watched it. Now let's go outside for a wee wander shall we? The seating area out here was pretty cool actually. The, the one from Cairn Ryan to Belfast didn't have this. I could see coming with friends in here in the summer. This is a great spot to be having a beer on the deck. I did spy a person walking up that walkway there, which I do not fancy doing. All it's take is one big wave and it'll send you flying. This carrying a briefcase looks a bit suspicious like a CIA operative away to make a drop or something.
Now they do have private cabins and lounges on this ship. I think Stena Plus memberships and I think also for truckers they have their own separate bar area and that as well. Food prices on board looked pretty reasonable. As with any transport services, it's a little bit more than normal, but the portion size looked pretty good from the people I saw with food. And of course, have to do the Rocky biscuit trick again. I just can't not do it when I've got Rockies on me. Use the you do not get unlimited coffees on this ferry from Dublin to Holyhead, but on the Cairn Ryan to Belfast one, it was £3 and you got a cup with unlimited refills. And that's it, three hours over just like that. It goes by really quick, especially if you watch a movie during it. Loading and unloading, really easy. You just drive straight ahead and the guys will keep you right. Now you know you're in Wales when you see road signs like this. The Welsh language baffles me, I will never understand how you can have so many consonants together and it makes sense. Kudos to the Welsh though, they fairly keep their language alive unlike us Scots and our Gaelic. So we are driving as close to the border of Wales and England as we can get because mum's got to see someone in Manchester the following day. So we're going to call it a night. We'll see you in the morning. Hello and welcome to the beautiful Shire of England. Look at that beautiful picturesque scenery. So last night we just stayed between the Welsh and English border, not too far from Liverpool but on the Wales side. And today we're on our way to Manchester and we're going to start the day off by going to a pool and get a freshen up and sauna, steam room, the usual. England's not a country that I've explored much myself and definitely in the future I'd like to get a camper van and explore more of England and Europe in general. After our swim and chill in the sauna, we went out to grab a little bite to eat. And we Very went nice. to this little cafe called the first Wilbury. time I had lasagna in a long time and it was fantastic. And mum had that gorgeous pea and ham soup. Look at that. 
And after our bite to eat, it was time to hit the road and make our way back up north to the motherland, Scotland. It was basically a race against the clock to beat the incoming storm. Storm Babette was brewing, as you will see later on in the video. We had to get back before it was too rough. Part of us was tempted to go to the Lake District and chance spending a night there, but the storm warning turned to red so we thought it's best to get up the road and be safe in our own house. We did stop at this wee town called Moffat and had a wee look around and also got some fish and chips to fill our bellies. As you can see here, this pharmacy was Scotland's first pharmacy to ever open in 1844. Now, belly is full of fish and chips, it's time to get on the road again. As you can see, the further north we get, the more grey the skies are getting and the heavier the rain is getting. So, best get home as quick as we can. The wind was getting really heavy and blowing the van, being quite a high van, so I'm glad Dad was driving. A shout out to him for doing that. I wouldn't fancy driving in that conditions. And a few trees were down on the road. Luckily, people were moving them. But the further we got, uh, there was power lines down as well, as you can see here, and people had to be redirected, and it was getting a bit crazy out there. Oh, that's breaking my heart each moment while the key and here's Turriff, our hometown. It's good to be home even though we've had a great trip around Ireland. No surprise that it's raining up here. That's a normal sight to see. And time to get home, get the kettle on, put the feet up and get a sleep in a comfy bed tonight. Well, it looks like we got home just in the nick of time. I'll show you the following clips from the news, but it got way worse out there and a lot of the roads were closed, so we wouldn't have made it back up if we didn't leave when we did, I reckon. 
and also parts of Ireland, Cork, where we were just a few days before, got battered and flooded as well. So we'll show you some pictures of that at the end. As emergency services prepare for what they say could be a challenging night ahead. I a, 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 a trench down to try and stop it, but it, was just, it, was, it wasn't big enough, obviously. With the next red alert looming, people here are struggling to understand how much more water and devastation their towns can take. Louise Scott, ITV News, Vicon. Okay, let's get the latest on the impact across the country. Hey, well that is the end of the Irish road trip videos unfortunately. Me, mum and dad had an amazing time and we'll definitely be back to Ireland. As I said in one of the videos that I've actually just applied for my Irish citizenship and it's a process that takes about nine months I believe so they received them in December so I'm hoping by the end of 2024 I will have my Irish passport and be an EU citizen once again uh, dad already got his one because he was a direct son of my grandfather so his only took eight weeks to get whereas a uh, grandson takes a bit longer nine months they were told me uh, next few videos will still be about my recent trip back home. Uh, there are going to be a few videos just showing you my hometown, Turriff, which is a small northeastern town in Scotland. And also a wedding, my cousin Lorraine's wedding that we went to. So I'll try and get all those clips together and show you a glimpse of what a Scottish wedding can look like. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the Irish videos. As I say, I'm still learning how to video edit. It is a process. I'm not getting through my course very much because I've got so much footage. I'm just trying to get all these videos smashed out because I am already a few months behind. But we will get there, slowly but surely, right? Anyways, I will see you in the next few videos. Ciao, ciao!